so Michael, I have known you forever, you know, since the Ubuntu days and now you are at Endless, you know. Uh, and now we are planning to start a show together. So before we kind of start talking about the show and all the things that we are planning to do, can you quickly tell about what are you doing these days? All right. So uh, like you said, I, I met you when I was working at Ubuntu. Uh, I was originally a web developer there, became a community manager. Uh, and now that's what I'm doing at Endless too. Uh, but my background is as a developer. I was doing that for years and years and years before I joined Ubuntu uh, web development. I did a little bit of desktop development, but you know, for fun stuff. Uh, but that's, you know, my, my background is making things, which is why I'm really excited about this show with you, because that is going to be the topic of it is, you know, making and building and creating stuff. Yeah, and that uh, also reminds me that we discussed on, on chat, uh, once you uh, were involved with some electronics makers projects for kids, and I also recall, because I did a story where you created an operating system or distribution for kids. Can you talk about these two projects? Sure, so a lot of my creative stuff kind of evolved around my own kids. Uh, when they were young, I got them started using uh, an Ubuntu uh, custom remix that I made. Uh, it was originally just Zubuntu that I customized the interface of, but uh, eventually took that as an opportunity to learn how to create a distro, uh, not quite from scratch, but you know, customizing it and having a custom ISO. Uh, so I, I made one, it was called Kimo. It was kind of a play on Eskimo. Uh, that was our mascot. We had a cute little Eskimo mascot. Uh, but it was designed for kids, it was easy to use, it was a nice clean interface, came pre-bundled with a bunch of games. Uh, was really popular for a while. Uh, my kids grew out of it, and so once they moved on to just a standard Ubuntu distro, uh, the development of Kimo kind of fell by the wayside. Plus other distros came up and started doing the same thing. You know, Unity came out, had a nice simple interface with big icons, which was kind of our main uh, feature for Kimo. And now things like Endless have come out, which are even simpler to use. You know, we've learned things from like Android and Chrome OS to, to simplify the Linux desktop. So I'm not sure that a uh, custom distro like Kimo is needed anymore, but it was a great learning experience for me. It was a lot of fun to do. Uh, and you were talking about the, the maker thing that I did. Uh, again, something inspired by my kids. They started tinkering and learning. Uh, we Radio Shacks were going out of business around here and they had these super sales where stuff was like 80-90% discounted uh, which was great because you could go in there and spend 20 bucks and get like a bag of electronic parts. Uh, so they started making stuff and you know I got to thinking this is really fun, kids really enjoy this but not many of them have the opportunity that my kids are getting. So my wife and I came up with this idea to do a, a pop-up maker space. You know we obviously couldn't afford to rent a, a a building or something and set up an actual makerspace and there wasn't one in my hometown the nearest one was like 30 miles away uh, which I didn't want to drive to so we, th we were thinking you know, what could we do for our our town to to provide this kind of thing for kids and there was a, a farmers market that happened once a week in the evenings and they were advertising you know space for tables for people to set up uh, so we, we, we bought a table space and every week for a couple of weeks, we would have a different make activity for kids to do. We did like a, um, a spectrograph with CDs and cardboard boxes. We did a build your own flashlight with popsicle sticks and button batteries and LEDs. Uh, and we did a few different things and the kids were always really interested in it. Um, the parents loved it because you know they were dragging these young kids around to the farmer's market. They were bored, they didn't care about anything. Uh, else at the farmer's market, but they could come to our table, they could spend five minutes learning about something, building something, and it was always something that they could take home with them too. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a little expensive to rent the table space, uh, and we didn't quite get as many kids as we were hoping to, so we don't do that anymore. But it really showed the, the potential mm -hmm. for something like that, uh, especially for kids. I mean, kids these days, they're so, you know, inundated with consumption things you know play this app watch this video or tv show there's very little out there anymore um that's just purely you know learn things and build things and create things you know there's lego and there's stuff around that uh, but that's really the minority when it comes to to what kids are being advertised right now i agree because first of all i have two kids one is four and one is actually he sorry not four five he actually says he is five and a half, not five, five and a half. You have to be very clear about that. And oh yeah, that's an important thing until you're about 10. Uh, 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, you were right when he was like the, the younger one now, uh, he loves playing because, you know, I have all this, you know, <laughs> I'm heavily into electronics and, you know, I have RC remote control car, which I drive less and I, you know, repair and, you know, fix it's like Traxxas three cars. One is Traxxas X-Max, which is a huge giant, you know, 40 pound car. Second is Tempeed and third one is uh, 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 Slash. So, uh, and then, you know, the battery, I say he was driving it and I said, battery is, is down. So he ran and grabbed a screwdriver to change the battery. <laughs> He's two years old because he, because always, you know, his twice, I always, you know, I have to unscrew everything to change the battery. With this car, you don't have to unscrew anything, but he ran and grabbed the screwdriver and he knows how to use screwdriver. Uh, my other one, you know, so I have a 3D printer also at home and he always, you know, every day, you see behind me, you'll see, you know, everything is 3D printed on open source printers, you know. So he would always, you know, uh, like his, uh, on his uh, uh, Valentine's Day, you know, we printed some, you know, car, uh, cards for his friends uh, mm -hmm. on the, our printer and he always wants, you know, to, to uh, have his own printer. So I bought him a 3D pen. Uh, so he was, uh, he wanted to build a house with a pen. And then I got him a Legos uh, Lego kit where you can build a robot or a dog, a cat, and a guitar. So he he built his that thing, and we sent him to uh, to a robotics class. Uh, because you are right. Because when I saw them growing up, and uh, the I mean we have an au pair, so he gets one to one care. But beyond that, if you look at that, you know the TV becomes entertainment, iPads and iPhones, iPhone? and once mm -hmm. to get sucked into that. Uh, they don't want to do anything, but at this age, they can, I mean, the, the, as you said, you know, there's so many things. When I was a kid, I used to have a chemi chemical and electronics lab in my, you know, house where I had all yeah, those yeah, had chemicals one. and I used to make multimeters by just putting the, yeah, wires and, uh, I mean, I still have a soldier cannon and I love doing all those things near Halloween. So, so I, I do feel that, you know, this is really uh, important. So when you mentioned that, and I think we talked on Facebook also that, oh, yeah, you know, we do this and that. And uh, so I was like, this is really interesting because uh, um, how to get kids, you know, not only excited about it, but at the same time, you know, I, I don't like to like, uh, oh, I like nature, I mean, nature and everything, but I don't like to, to kind of cut them off from technology, you know. So yeah. that, you know, you just go and live in a village and no, I don't, I want them to be ex fully exposed, but in a way that they are not just consumers, but also kind of creators and they, exp because this is the world they will be living in 20 years from now, it's all going to be software driven world. And if they are not prepared for that, they will oh, be exactly, the next gold yeah. miners, you know? Yeah. So I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of teaching like computer technology yes. and yes. software development as a, a required course in school, because you're absolutely right. You know, in 10 years, everything's going to be software driven. And if you don't know what it's doing or how to make it do what you want to do, then you're really kind of going to be at the mercy of all of it. Yeah. I actually, uh, sometimes my wife gets upset because I buy, you know, like I got a little bits kit which is, you know, at this moment, it's too much for him because it connects to the internet and does all those things. But you know what, yeah. I, my whole idea is that he doesn't look at the app interface and touch a screen, you know, he he should be able to put things together and build something and, and, and you know, and gets excited about it. Yeah, it's that, that that's, idea that's that, you know, kind of... you can build the things you want. You don't just have to buy them that's kind of gotten lost. Mm -hmm. And you know, not we, we've talked a lot about right. it kids, right. but you know, even as adults, you know, that's something a lot of adults, they, they, they still, somewhere inside, they know that that's, you know, an option and they want to do that. Um, but they've kind of lost, uh, they've lost a lot of time in learning that it's not been something that's been pushed for them growing up. You know, you and I were about the same age growing up. There wasn't a whole lot about you know making stuff. This whole maker movement came after you know we had already passed that childhood age, but it's still yes. important for adults. And so, mm -hmm. you know, as part of this show, it's not just about you know things you can do with your kids. It's you know, things you can do as an adult too that are you know fun. They are challenging intellectually. That you'll learn something. You'll make something. Um, and you know, I, I want to make sure that we 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 have something for everybody on the show. So it's going to be a little bit about kids. It's going to be a little bit about adults. Um, 
you know, like I've got a, a hydroponic setup that uh, I built a light kit for, um, that kind of thing that, you know, can get grown-ups back into this idea of building and making things and sharing these ideas too. Uh, that's an important part of this whole maker movement is not just that you can build it, but that you can share what you've done with other people and they can build on that and share you know, their additions and their enhancements back to you. So that whole open source mentality, the, the you know, share and share alike, uh, you know, everything's better when we're building it together kind of thing um, is an important part of this whole you know, maker movement. And that, that's another common uh, kind of, you know, thread between you and me is that, you know, we are both, you know, super hyperactive in open source space. Uh, and, and do you think that the whole makers movement uh, became, you know, kind of phenomena because of the success of open source? Uh, I mean, open source has, I cover a lot of, you know, enterprise space, not community driven. So, and that's a tricky area where people, you know, don't want to give away their IP. Uh, uh, but now open source has kind of become the default uh, software development model, even in the hardware space, a lot of work is going on. So do you think, you know, that uh, open source played, you know, the success of open source played a big role in the success of this makers movement also? I think open source has really brought it back, you know, Years ago, you know, if you go back a hundred years, there was still this kind of idea that you share knowledge with people, you know, whether that's, mm -hmm. you know, baking knowledge or, um, you know, knitting or you know, construction. It, it, it was all shared stuff. There wasn't this idea that, you know, if I learned how to make uh, a better bread, I'm going to keep it to myself, right? You know, th there were these, you know, people doing this at home doing it for themselves, there wasn't this idea that we have to restrict access to knowledge so that we can make money off of it. It was about the thing that you were making and making more of it was a good thing and having other people make more of it was a good thing. Um, and that, that you know, kind of started to fade away and I think the open source movement built on top of that and brought it back uh, and, and made it important again. Does that make sense? I think it makes perfect. But one more thing that you, you, one thing that you touched upon, and that was that you know, in previous age, uh, people you know they were like sharing stuff. It was not just to hold that secret so that you can you know make money from it or whatever it is. That basically I think mostly started the copyright and all those things in U.S. You know, I I don't historically I cannot tell you, but that's the context that I see uh, these days. But the funny thing is, and when I say open source I, and enterprise, the funny thing is that. Uh, all these companies, they are like billion dollars, they are making, like Red Hat is making like three or four billion dollars from a pure open source. So open source does not mean no business, you know, actually, uh, uh, because the process of making bread is different from actually selling the bread or you, because you can build a very good business model around, you know, distributing the bread or, you know, putting, you know, how do you cut it? How do you put toppings on it? You know, so that's, that's what it is all about. So open source, uh, just for the viewers, we don't, by sharing, we don't mean that it, it's, it has nothing to do with capitalism or making money. It's two different things. I cook a lot of Indian food right at home. Uh, I can give you, give you the recipe and you can also make the same. You may or may not because like sometimes, okay, let's say that I just, you know, uh, fry the onion just three more seconds and that gives the flavor. You may do it less than that. So there are a lot of other things that make your stuff versus my stuff. But how do I distribute it? You know, how do I present it? How do I put five things together? That is what is value add or business add on top of that. So open source doesn't mean just for the sake of our, <laughs> because people often confuse open source with, you know, free of cost. That is not the case. And I think makers, I mean, look at my printer. I mean, that guy, Prus, Joseph Prusa from Prague, you know, he, I mean, he is dealing with millions and millions of dollars now. It's, it's the whole CAD is open source. The firmware is open source. You can build and, and everything is Arduino and Raspberry Pi based. You can build the whole printer in your home without having to pay anything to him. It actually will be more expensive, you know, <laughs> to, but it's there. So it, yeah, it's, it's true. But the most exciting thing is to, to kind of build that culture, you know, of, of, of 
to be honest, when you said, you know, that is less for kids than more for adults or not. The thing is, every time I buy a kit for my son, it's actually more for me <laughs> than, than, than for him. Uh, sometimes my wife actually has to stop me and she has to tell, it is for him. Why are you playing with it? Let him build it. <laughs> yeah, I tend so, to, to buy yeah, like yeah. multiple things so that we can all share. Uh, but yeah, you, yeah, it's a great point about Red Hat. You know, the, all of what they sell, well, the, the services, all the, the, the products they sell services around are open source. Anybody could take the same code, build the same software, and build a business around that. But people still pay Red Hat yeah. for it. And that's because there's a value in what Red Hat is doing that is separate from the secrecy around source code. And I think, you know, that. Right. Selling soft, selling closed source software by you know by by making access to the software itself the exclusive bit is kind of a really easy. I don't want to say lazy because people you know, that's their job. I don't want to call them lazy, but it, it's the easy way of doing it. Right? Um, it's easy right. to take something that's readily accessible and readily reproducible and artificially limit how much of that there is. And sell that, you know, that that artificial yeah. scarcity, um, but but that's not the only way that there is to make money off of open source software or open source anything. You know, there's there's a value in actually right. taking this open information and doing something with it and putting it together and supporting it that people are always going to be willing to pay for it. So there's always going to be a business model around that, and the whole idea of open source is that when we share the information we can all build more and better businesses around that final product than we could otherwise. And so, you know, the whole rising, t uh, a rising tide lifts all ships, you know, is, is fundamental to that. The more information we have out there, the more information we share, the better we will all be for it. So we don't have to create that artificial scarcity. Uh, you made some points and uh, since I'm a fiction writer, one thing that I th always think about is that, uh, let's say Game of Thrones, right? G.R. Martin wrote it, or let's say Harry Potter, she wrote it. There is no secret that the whole source code is out there, you know? The whole storyline is out there, you know, other than what is cooking in our head. That, but, but you won't see, you know, uh, no matter how good a writer is, you cannot create the same Game of Thrones, you know? So, so the thing is, just because you are releasing the source code, Sometimes people get afraid and Richard Stallman makes this point often again and again that if you're not good at it, you should not be in the business at all, you know, because, you know, we have seen, you know, but people, you know, I cannot write the same kind of Game of Thrones, you know, even so, so th th that is another point just because it's all open source doesn't mean people will stake it and, you know, you will be deprived of everything that you have built. No, it won't. Uh, you know, you bring your own value. So now let's uh, let's change gears a bit and let's go back to uh, since it's episode zero. So let's just quickly talk about. Uh, I mean, we just threw some ideas around. You know that these are the things that we are interest. Uh, I mean, we are interested in, and these are the things that really matter. So so going forward, Michael, what do you think is going to be the kind of uh, uh, format of the show? So one of the things that I want yeah. us to do is to have maybe like a project every week that's related to the thing that we're talking about that people at home watching this show can go and do themselves. Something that's you know, free to do or relatively inexpensive to do. Um, they can try it out, they can learn something, they can share their creation with other people watching the show and with their friends and family and get them motivated to do it. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll take maybe have a theme for every show, something that'll touch on a broader news topic or a bigger development, uh, and then tie that in with some kind of, you know, create it yourself project or open source, open information project that people can do themselves mm -hmm. um, to, to learn about it a little bit more in depth uh, and, and become a part of that movement. Yeah, just the way I have made this uh, 3D printed sawtooth from Horizon Dawn Zero. Uh, yeah, we can, we can, I mean, uh, because uh, I think both of us, you know, we make a lot of stuff uh, and we can talk about what we're building. And, and we can kind of try to, as you said, you know, that uh, commentary on what is, if something big like SpaceX is happening, so we can also kind of uh, find some thread where we can bind it together 
So we can talk about those topics as well. I think this is totally an open-ended show for now. We will see, you know, how what kind of response we get from our audiences, audience, and um, what really, you know, keeps us going and keep us keep, because there's so many. Th the fa the last time when we were just discussing the show, I had like 30 minutes in my mind, and I think we ended up talking like two or two two and a half hour. And yeah, we, we it went like, on we for a while. Keep going on and on on. Yeah, so so there's yeah. So we're gonna try and keep this show talk, kind of uh, short. Uh, we, we discussed maybe like 30 minutes. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do it weekly or monthly or yeah. what. That's going to depend on um, you know, the audience ideas and the topics that we have to talk about. So um, again, right. yeah. give us feedback. Help us make this show the kind of show that you want. Uh, if this is an interesting topic to you, you can help steer it. You know, we're, very, we're all about open and making, so that includes the show itself, right? So people can you know, help us create a better show that's what they want it to be. Ah!